For thousands of square miles, sand is blown across a limestone base by incessant winds. In recent times, the sea has risen to give the gulf its present shape. But beneath the sea, the desert continues. The waters are shallow, but they sustain life. Weeds and sea grasses root in the sand. Any protuberance on the bottom is taken over by animal and vegetable pioneers. An abandoned car tire becomes a base and a refuge. Home is where you find it, and this brittle star crams itself beneath a convenient rock. Food and shelter are prime requirements of all sea creatures, and both are provided by the branches of this staghorn coral. It's one of the many corals which flourish in the gulf, foresting the seabed and providing an environment for fish and every form of marine life. Until only a few hundred years ago, scientists believed that coral was a plant, but it's an animal, closely related to the sea anemone, and it feeds both by photosynthesis, the process by which sunlight is converted into food, and on small organisms suspended in the water. The polyps of this daisy coral dredge the current for food. Each waving strand is a single animal which divides, then subdivides, to form a colony. Their bodies are contained in a calcium cup or socket and it's the mass of calcium that creates a coral reef. Only hard corals build a reef but they have no single pattern. The polyps of the lichen coral overlap like ruffles on a cloak. The undulations that they form help to stir food particles in the right direction. Corals are selective in their feeding, rejecting vegetable for animal matter that's carried by the current. And the shape of this vase coral ensures that a good supply of food is trapped. Other corals, such as this honeycomb, present an all-over feeding surface to the sea. So does the brain coral, tucked away among the staghorn.
coral polyps die, their skeletons form the calcium foundations of another reef. Some reefs are very old. Corals existed 2,000 million years ago, but the gulf corals are comparatively recent. Their forms are diverse, but they're much the same as their early ancestors. In some places, subterranean shifts and convulsions have heaved the land out of the sea, taking the coral with it. And here's the evidence. Perfectly preserved fossil corals of the same type that are found in the Gulf today. These coral fragments, broken by waves and tossed on the beach, will eventually be ground down into the white sand of a coral island. Around the island grows the reef shelf. Its waters are shallow. Reef-forming corals do not grow below 50 meters, and here the depth is considerably less than that. Hard and soft corals frequently grow together. Many of the soft corals are small leathery shrubs which cluster on the shelves of the reef. In some places, they occupy more space than the corals which provide their living room. They too form colonies made up of numerous polyps which ceaselessly groom the current for food. This red alcinarian has eight tentacles on each polyp and the large spicules embedded in its body not only give it support but protection too. Small fish flit like birds among the branches of this alcinarian, and the gardens provide footing for many coral species, great and small. This Gorgonian coral has been colonized by an army of brittle stars 
which ring its branches like miniature bracelets. Black corals need less light and grow in deeper water. Their white polyps conceal a jet black skeleton, which some collectors prize as jewelry. Whip corals also grow away from the reef, rooting themselves on the seabed. But they too are adopted by a variety of other animals, in this case oysters, clams and sponges. Sponges will anchor themselves to any convenient base. This tube sponge rises like the pipes of an organ from its scaffolding of stag coral. And dead coral here plays host to a close relative a stinging hydroid. These are cup coral. Many other strange creatures live in the reef. The population of the reef includes both visitors and permanent residents, such as these moray eels. During the day, they secrete themselves in holes and venture out at night to feed. Spotted morays are found throughout the Gulf and in Oman. These grow to over two meters long. They can inflict a nasty bite, but this menacing mouth is less threatening than it appears. All that it's doing here is breathing. The electric ray is even less aggressive. Most of the time it rests on the bottom with only its gills moving. It's free swimming and doesn't need the protection of the reef. Behind its head there are organs which can deliver a powerful electric shock strong enough to stun its prey and to fell a grown man. Boxfish have their own security system. Their taste is so unpleasant that they're untroubled by predators. A hard carapace, as firm as a box, protects the body 
and the skin exudes a toxic substance which can kill other fish. The toadfish is venomous too. Its bony mouth enables it to munch through the shells of clams and oysters and clearly the reef offers an ample supply of food. Coral polyps provide at least part of the diet of the parrotfish family. They feed by day and at night go to sleep in a convenient hole. The reef is a safe dormitory. Relatives and rivals doze side by side. This is a broom-tailed wrasse. It belongs to an enormous family whose members vary in size and coloration, but they all have mouths which are rigid and strong enough to shear through the toughest of spines or shells. It's the mouth of the wrasse which equips it to tackle this spiny sea urchin. Others join in the feast. That's a moon wrasse with a yellow tail. fish with a mask across his eyes. Even while it's being eaten, the spines of the sea urchin still inflict damage. For the emperor angel, the meal has become a painful experience. Sweet Lips is more determined. Although its face bristles with spines from the urchin's body, it continues to eat its fill. Food and shelter are equally important to the fish of the coral reef, and this trigger fish is in search of a place to hide. His strange shaped fins enable him to swim out backwards, and his tail looking ominously like the claw of a giant crab, discourages possible intruders. Damselfish live in the staghorn coral, moving as one when there's the hint of danger. There's no threat from this Picasso fish, so called for its abstract patterning.
the Emperor Angel browses on soft coral polyps. and surgeon fish patrol the edge of the reef. On either side of the tail, there's a yellow spine as sharp as a scalpel, which can inflict a painful wound. But they live here peacefully, cropping algae from the reef keeping the coral garden free from weeds. Here's a close relative, the blue surgeon. He is about to stray onto a patch of territory which is jealously guarded by a sergeant major fish. Sergeant Majors are fiercely protective of particular patches of algae, but gummed to the reef are the Sergeant Majors' eggs. He's determined to keep them safe, and he won't tolerate trespasses. Some fish, like some people, never know when they're not wanted. They have to be taught. The steady cropping of the reef by the fish that live here is essential to its maintenance. These Moorish idols nibble constantly at the algae, keeping it in check. A healthy reef acts as a filter, purifying the water, actually cleaning the sea. All the creatures that the reef supports, including this butterfly fish, are its caretakers. But it's an ecosystem which depends on a delicate balance. If the algae grows too profusely, the coral polyps are choked. The reef dies.
storms can shatter the coral. Destruction here is total. And there's a growing menace from a starfish known as the crown of thorns. A plague of these creatures can devastate a reef. Already they've been found in the waters of Oman, although none yet have been seen in the Arabian Gulf. Crawling under the coral, the crown of thorns extrudes its stomach all over the living polyps, digesting them as it goes. In its wake, the coral is left bare only a white skeleton remains. But man too can destroy the reefs. Landfill and dredging can choke the coral with seaborne dust. The churning of ships' propellers can have the same damaging effect. And a major oil spill could return this fertile underwater garden to the desert to preserve it as it is an intricate balance must be maintained the survival of all coral reefs